So ideally, you want to enter a position right here, and you want to exit a position right here. All right, y'all, it's 2021. That same logic still applies. But in this video, I'm going to be showing y'all six different ways to exit a contract or position before expiration. So if you're having trouble knowing when to exit a position before expiration, keep watching. Hey, what's good? It's your boy, Matthew Michael. And that video that you just saw was actually from last year. And most of the walkthroughs in the video were based off of a trading platform that I no longer use. Now I actually do most of my trading on Webull, which gives you access to much better tools, which help to formulate a much better idea of when to exit a position. And because of that, I am making a newer, more updated video. But first, if you're new here and you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so that you don't miss any future content or giveaways. And also while you're down there, please be sure to smash the like button. It really helps to support the channel. And for those of you interested in getting two free stocks valued anywhere up to $1,850 for opening an account on Webull and making a deposit of $100 or more, be sure to check out the referral link down below in the description. One last thing before we get into the video, just wanted to give a quick shout out to the coldest water. Uh, they actually sent me this bottle right here. Uh, this bottle is dope. It actually has my name laser etched into it and you can get one for yourself as well. They come in a variety of colors and they keep my water cold for days. If you're interested in getting your own, they come in a variety of color as well as sizes. So be sure to check out the referral link down below in the description if you're interested. And when you purchase from the coldest water using the promo code invest, you get 10% off your entire order. And now that I've said all that, I would just like to remind you that I am not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. I simply make these videos for entertainment purposes. And if it happens to help you out along the way, makes me feel even better. So yeah, remember, not a financial advisor. And as simple as it seems, the first exit strategy that I'm actually gonna to talk to y'all about is one that I like to call see profits, take profits. It's surprising how many people miss out on profits simply because they do not take them when they see them. There are a lot of trades, whether it be stocks or options, where there is a window of opportunity to take profits, but the person that is in the trade misses out simply because they're not ready to take profits or they're being too greedy and miss their window of opportunity. And don't get me wrong, I've definitely had my fair share of losses, but I've learned to take profits over the years when I see them, especially when it comes to the more speculative option plays. And exit strategy number two is going to be the result of failing from the first strategy. And that is gonna be knowing when you've been beat. Normally it's best before you enter a trade to have a good idea of where you wanna exit should things not be going your way. A lot of people have a target price or a target percentage where they like to cut out and take their losses. Some people like to take losses at 10%, 25%, 50%. It really just depends on what works best for you. But one thing is for sure, Having a target exit point, should things not be going your way, will save you a lot of money, especially when you're in those more speculative plays that fluctuate a lot. For instance, say you grabbed a call on Tesla that you paid $1,000 for. And for those of you who have traded options on Tesla before, you know just how fast a Tesla option can go from $1,000 to worthless. While it's not the most ideal, getting out having lost $250 to $500 of that initial $1,000 is much better than getting out of the trade with only $20 or even worse, letting it expire and not having any money left over of that $1,000. And, and $250 to $500 would actually be the equivalent of cutting out anywhere between 25 and 50%. So having these price targets can definitely help implement some discipline and save you a lot of money in the long run. But while having a downside exit point is ideal, uh, it doesn't always happen. So sometimes you're already in the play and you just have to make a split decision and salvage what you already have. The third way to exit a position, in my opinion, is gonna be best on stocks that you're already up on. And that's gonna be a trailing stop loss. And for those of you that don't know what a trailing stop loss is, a trailing stop loss is basically a moving threshold for you to sell out of a position. So for instance, this isn't the most common situation, but it happens. Let's just say you bought into a share at $10 and the stock is on a continuous tear up to $100 and you had a 5% 
trailing stop loss on that trade. So you have that 5% trailing stop loss on and then the stock suddenly pulls back from $100 to $90. Because you had that 5% trailing stop loss on, when the stock drops past your 5% threshold, it sells out of your position. So when the stock dropped to $90, uh, $95 was a threshold. So right there, it sold out of your position and you took profits on the play. Now, the good thing about trailing stop loss is, as the stock continues to go up, so does your stop loss. So in a way, if you're already profitable on the position, you don't really have to worry about taking profits. You can kind of just leave it alone and let it do its thing. But the thing that can suck about trailing stop losses is uh, stocks are kind of erratic and a stock can take a 5% dip out of nowhere and then immediately just turn around and start going back up. And if it dips and then goes up like that, you're missing out on profits that you could have had. And again, that is why this is best on positions that you're already up on. Now, if for some reason you trade on Robinhood or still trade on Robinhood, even after everything that's going on, uh, I'm just gonna let you know in my personal experience, all the stop losses on Robinhood are trash. Whether they be trailing stop losses, even their regular stop losses, I have lost money on, and this isn't something that I've done that I'm just blaming on Robinhood. The stop losses on Robinhood, in my experience, legit suck. I've had stop losses set at a threshold. I've watched the stock and watched the stock plunge past that threshold and Robinhood not close out of the position. Continue to watch it plunge past that threshold and Robinhood has still not sold out of the position to the point where I had to manually sell out of the position. Every time Robinhood has exercised a stop loss for me, and instead of me just exiting myself, I always lose a considerable amount more than the stop loss. And it's always a good amount of time more after the stock has fallen past that. So yeah, it's been a few months since I've traded on Robinhood. I'm not gonna say they don't work now, but in my experience, Robinhood stop losses are trash. And for those of you wanting to set up a trailing stop loss on Webull, you actually can't set up a trailing stop loss on the mobile app. You can set up a regular stop loss, but you can't set up a trailing. If you wanted to set up a trailing stop loss through Webull, you have to set it up through the desktop platform. And for those of you who wanna see what that looks like, here it is. All right, so here we are in the Webull platform. I'm about to show you how to really quickly set up a trailing stop loss. All right, so if you want to set up a trailing stop loss on Webull, uh, you're going to come right over here where it says order type. Click on that down arrow, trailing stop right here. And then you can either set a dollar trailing stop amount or you can set a percentage. And just like that, boom, you set up a trailing stop. Uh, you can't do this in the mobile platform, so you will have to do this on the desktop platform. But yeah, that's how you do it. Now that you know how to set up a trailing stop loss, the fourth strategy is going to be looking at the RSI. And while the RSI isn't the end all be all, it does give you a good idea of when the stock is due for a drop. And for those of you that aren't familiar with the RSI, the RSI stands for Relative Strength Index. And the RSI ranges from zero to 100, typically with anything below 30 being considered oversold and anything over 70 being considered to be overbought. Using the RSI as your reference, you will want to take profits on any long position when the RSI is up there in that overbought territory. And you would also want to take profits on any short positions when they're down there in that oversold territory. Be sure to stick around to the end of the video and I'll be sure to give you a better example of what this looks like in the charts. Now the fifth strategy is going to be to look at the SMA, which is the simple moving average. The SMA actually calculates the average of a selected range of prices. I personally like to look at the 50 to 200 day SMA, but you can look at whatever range you'd like. In a similar fashion to the RSI, this line helps to paint a picture. While the stock is trading above the SMA, it's considered a hold, but the moment that it crosses below, uh, it's a good time to consider letting it go. But again, remember the SMA is not the end all be all. Uh, technicals help to paint a picture. We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. But always remember to get in and do your due diligence as well. Don't only rely on technicals. And the sixth and final strategy, which is also my personal favorite, is to quickly recover your initial investment. And what I mean by that is, let's pretend you bought 100 shares of a stock and then the stock increased by 100%, meaning that it doubled. 
when that stock doubles, you sell out a half percent, regaining your initial investment. And now all the money that you have in that stock has technically been made free. Once you have that money free, it kind of relieves you of your risk. Uh, you can now relax and let that position do whatever. You can let it grow. And now you don't have that emotional attachment to it. That very reason right there is one reason that I always try to make sure that I get at least two contracts, two shares, at least two of whatever position I'm in. Uh, that way it is easier for me to regain my initial investment and let the play ride out. And now that we've had the time to go over the six different exit strategies, I wanted to quickly hop in the charts and show you how you can locate them. All right, so here we are in the Weeble mobile platform this time. And we're gonna take a quick look at some of the things we talked about, such as the RSI and the SMA. So uh, first thing that you'll notice is down here at the bottom, you'll see RSI. It's not quite as advanced on the app, but you still get a good picture. Um, if you can see this bottom line uh, down here where it says RSI, there's a 30 down at the bottom. That means it's getting close to oversold. And you'll notice whenever it gets close to that oversold mark, it runs back up. And if we actually follow this chart and go along this chart, uh, you'll see that right here after hours, up there where it's at 126 and it was kind of at its high, uh, it got well above 70 and it went into overbought territory. And of course it came right back down after that. Then it kept selling off, selling off, selling off. And then touch 30 again. So yeah, that's, that's the RSI. Uh, again, good to buy when it's closer to being oversold and good to sell when it's closer to being overbought. And then the other indicator I wanted to give y'all a better look at is the SMA. Uh, right here, they'll be noted as the moving average lines. Uh, so the main ones I look at are gonna be this blue line, which in my chart is a 200 day moving average and this orange line, which in my chart is the 50 day moving average. Uh, there's also a purple line there. Uh, that's normally not there on my chart. I don't know when I got turned on, may actually turn that off pretty soon. But uh, yeah, I watched the 50 and 200 day moving average. What's actually helpful about having both of these moving averages is the fact that uh, whenever they cross, that is usually either a bearish or a bullish signal. So right here, you can see uh, right here, kind of in the middle of the screen where they, the blue line and the yellow line cross, which is the 250 day moving average. That basically signals that since it was going to the downside, the stock's trending down and it doesn't really have too much upward momentum going to it. And then if you continue to follow that 50 day moving average, you'll see that uh, it is downward trending, uh, meaning that this stock is trending down and that it may be a good time to either short it or just leave the stock alone and let it do its thing. And that's gonna do it. I hope that gave you a better understanding of these indicators. If you learned anything or enjoyed the video, please be sure to smash the like button. If for some reason you made it this far and haven't already, please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so that you don't miss any future content or giveaways. And last but certainly not least, thank you so much for watching and peace.